Hello, friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to learn a very easy and very necessary mathematical exercise. Today, we are going to learn to divide. Dividing is the most generous mathematical operation because it means sharing. Dividing is taking a quantity of something and sharing it in equal parts. For example, if we have six bananas and we divide them between three monkeys, each monkey gets one and Two bananas! We already know that dividing is distributing, but how do you do the mathematical operation? Well, it's very easy using this sign, which is like an angle. There are other signs that also mean dividing, like these, but we're going to use the angle. If we have four buckets full of water and we have to divide them, between two thirsty camels in the middle of the desert, how would we do it? Well, it's very easy. We place the four which represent the buckets that we have to divide here, and the two which represents the camels that are going to receive them here. And very easily, we divide the buckets. And each camel gets two buckets. So 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. How cool! Apart from dividing, we have also given the poor camels a drink. Knowing how to divide is really important for day-to-day -day life. We do it all the time. But what happens when we have a very large amount? Let's imagine that we have 16 carrots and we have to divide them amongst four rabbits. How many carrots do they each get? Let's calculate it by performing the mathematical process step by step. It would be to write 16, which are the carrots we have to distribute, among four. Which are the rabbits we have to distribute the carrots to? We have to know that dividing is the opposite of multiplying. So to know how much 16 divided by 4 is, we have to know what number multiplied by 4 gives us a total of 16. That's why it's very important to know the times tables. Let's try. 4 times 1, 4. 4 times 2, 8. 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 4, 16. Ah, here we have the number we were looking for, and we put it here. Now we subtract 16 from 16, and as we don't have anything left, under the 16 we put a 0. So 16 divided by 4 equals 4, and we don't have any carrots left over. The division is exact. Look how happy the rabbits are! But what would happen if instead of 16 carrots, we had 17? Let's see. What number multiplied by 4 gives me 17? Well, let's multiply. 4 times 1, 4. 4 times 2, 8. 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 4, 16. 4 times 5, 20. Oh no, that's too much. So we'll have to go back to the previous one, the 4. So. We put the 4 here, and the 16 here. Now we subtract the 17 and the 16. 17 minus 16 equals 1, which we place here. So, 17 divided by 4 is still 4, but we have one left. We have one carrot left. And since there is one remaining, this is an integer division and not an exact division like the other one. Dividing is still really fun and easy, right? 
we already know what it means to divide and we also know how to do the mathematical equation. Now we are going to know the parts of the division that are the dividend, the divisor, the quotient and the rest. The dividend is the amount that we are going to distribute. In this case it is the number 17 because there are 17 carats that we are going to distribute. The divider is the part between which the dividend will be distributed. Since there are four rabbits, the number four is the dividend. The quotient is the amount each part gets. If each rabbit gets four carrots, the quotient is number four. And the rest refers to the amount that is left over. In this case, we have one carrot left over, which, to the displeasure of the rabbits, is what we will keep for the next day. We already know how to divide, but there is something we have to remember, and that is that zero divided by any number always equals zero, because if there is nothing to divide, nobody will get anything. That's pretty clear, right? Well, now that you know how to divide, you will have to go over the times tables. The times tables are essential for dividing, because if you know that 3 times 2 equals 6, you will remember that 6 divided by 3 is 2, and that 6 divided by 2 is 3. Goodbye friends, dividers or distributors, see you in the next video! Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video! <laughs> Today we're going to learn about fractions! So what is a fraction? A fraction expresses in the language of mathematics the parts that are taken from something that's divided into equal parts. This something in mathematics is called a whole number or an integer. A whole number can be, well, it can be anything. A pizza, a drawing, a swimming pool or a delicious apple. Mmm, just like this one. Let's imagine I have this apple and I have to feed this cute little goat. The apple is very big, so I'm going to split it in half, in two equal parts, just like this. So I've split the apple into two equal parts. I'm going to give one of those parts to this little goat. Look how happy it is! And I'll keep the other part. I gave her half of the apple. A half! That's a fraction! But then... How do we express this in the language of mathematics? Well, it's very easy. We express it like this. We draw a line, the fraction line, and write two numbers. The bottom number is called the denominator. The denominator tells us the equal parts into which we've divided the unit, in this case, the apple. It's a two because we've divided it into two parts. If we divided it into three parts, the denominator would be a three. Very good. The top number is called the numerator. The numerator indicates how many parts of the whole number we have taken. In this case, how many parts of the apple the goat has eaten. It's a one because it ate one half. Right? Fantastic! Now we know how to write a fraction. Now let's learn how to read it. When we read fractions, we first say the top number, the numerator. The numerator is read as we normally do with cardinal numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and then we name the denominator. And when we name the denominator, we do it with partitive numbers. For example, 
If it's a two, we say half. If it's a three, we say a third. If it's a four, we say a quarter. If it's a five, what do we say? Fifth. Very good. From ten onwards, that is, from the tenth, it's even easier. Because all you have to do is add the ending th, th to the number. So, eleven is read eleventh. Twelve is read twelfth. And so on to infinity and beyond. Now, let's take another example. Let's suppose I have this pile of fresh straw. I'm going to divide it into six equal parts. Haha! <laughs> I knew more goats would appear. Wait! Don't eat it yet! We still have to! Well, it looks like the goats have eaten four pieces. Let's express it in fractions. The first thing we have to do is see how many parts the whole number has been divided into, which in this case is the pile of straw we had. We put that number at the bottom in the denominator. And in our case it is six, because we have divided the straw into six equal pieces. Now we will see how many of these six parts the goats have eaten. Four! They're so greedy! Well, we put that four at the top in the numerator. Like this. So, we have a fraction of four sixths. The goats have eaten four sixths of straw because they have eaten four parts of the six into which we had divided the straw. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> now we know that a fraction represents the number of parts we take from a whole number that is divided into equal parts. No, no, you've already eaten too much. You'll get tummy ache. Hey you, he ate another piece. He's changed the fraction. Which part of the fraction has changed? The numerator. Very good, because we've taken five parts of the whole number that was divided into six parts. How about now that you know how to express fractions and read them, you have a quarter of a chocolate to celebrate. <laughs> Goodbye, friends. See you next time. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.